Live from New York, it's the show that got their upset alert correct. It's first things first. Huge show today. What? I'm scared to ask. Why is Brew angry? <laughs> Can you put a grade on the Cowboys' performance for us? A grade? Yes, please. <laughs> a grade. You want a grade. Well. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah. Less than a week after the owner says that his head coach should take a bow <laughs> He's so upset because our that. offense is so great. Yeah. They rack up one touchdown mm -hmm. and 16 total points against a defense. That gave up 31 second half points just a week ago to Daniel Jones and the hapless New York Giants. Let's see. <laughs> Less than a week after Micah Parsons uh -huh. says the lion is ready to hunt. Oh, I, forgot about that. I got a new prey on my mind and it's Josh Dobbs. <laughs> They allow Josh Dobbs, a fourth-round pick, oh. who's played on four teams in three years, who started five games, to rack up nearly 250 yards and a passer rating of 120. Let's see. Oh, no, they're, they're not at the grade yet. When's the grade? Less than two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. After Micah, Micah's running his mouth. He got yeah. a podcast. Yeah. After Micah tells Cowboy Nation. Yeah. Buckle up. Oh, I knew that. Because this <laughs> is going to the Super Bowl. They rack up 12 penalties in the first half. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. that's the most ever and a half in an NFL game in the last 12 years. What? Let's what? see. Wait, we got to get a great With thing. everybody <laughs> and their mamas calling this the best defense in the league. Uh -huh. Right, the doomsday oh, defense, yeah. the, the, the legion of boons, the orange crush. Yes, Lawrence Taylor, the 85 Bears, they give up 222 yards mm -hmm. rushing. Yeah. So, Wilds. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, thank goodness. I went to Catholic school so, oh. where they grade hard. Uh-huh. And the nuns take no prisoners. <laughs> so, when I consider all of the evidence. Yes. Uh-huh. There is only one grade I can give these Cowboys. <laughs> F game! They brought their F game to Arizona. And Nick, uh, before oh, you go before quickly, go, let me, let me quickly, quickly finish. Quickly. <laughs> let me wrap it up. All right, right. show's almost over. <laughs> I got to say this. Okay, okay you're going to have to. Joshua Dobbs. Yeah. yeah. Jonathan Gannon. Yeah. Hollywood Brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. James Conner and all of you brothers playing for the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Take a bow. Oh, wow. I mean, right. Take a bow. That was you pretty, right. Yeah, I mean, that was great. Work. That, that was, was fantastic. That was Dusty. fantastic. It was, it was, and imagine if you're watching this and you were one That's of those good. people yeah. last week arguing the Cowboys should be a top, like, power well, rankings or tiers weeks. or anything. How, well, they what look a, good. What a fool. No, Pass what what a fool you would Pass feel like. It. All right, so here's the thing. I, I would hope people have learned their lesson mm -hmm. that a team that we all consider excellent having a terrible performance against an opponent we all consider probably terrible early in a season – <laughs> does not a season make. We saw it last year with the Chiefs and the Colts. Yep, we we saw it the year before with Cincinnati, who maybe at the time we didn't know was excellent. We found out later when they lost to the Bears. Tom Brady, it was either week four or five when he also was playing a bad Bears team, and that was the famous, do I get a fifth down play? So this, it, this does not, by any means, and I know Brew is not even saying it does, end the Cowboys right. as contenders. Right. No. It is, however embarrassing in this through the lens of Dak did have quite the odd quote. So the quote we just played for you, y'all put us on top of the world and now you get what you wanted. Doesn't really make sense. No. And hit, furthermore, the kind of canary in the coal mine that maybe possibly, and you know how much this pains me, Brew might have had a slight point about the Cowboys putting the cart before the horse a bit. Slight point. Was slight when point. Dak Prescott said, there's only been one undefeated team ever. That quote makes a lot of sense if you're 13-0. and 0. 
and you have a trip up game you shouldn't have. Yep. At two and zero, oh, like right now the Eagles and Bucks are both undefeated. They play tonight. I'm guessing whoever loses that game is not going to be like, well, we knew it was going to be tough. There's only been one undefeated team ever. <laughs> They're just going to. And so I do think there was some validity to it. Now, and we'll get to this more later. I also think. That I am, it is easier for me to excuse the defensive performance than the offensive performance because I think the Diggs injury, maybe there was a bit of a 96 hour shell shock. Not that they can't compete without him, but from an emotional deflation standpoint, sure. that I think any team that loses one of its best players in a practice in particular, what you almost have built into it, all right, over the course of a season, we're going to have guys knocked out during games. But anybody that gets hurt in a practice, you feel like, gosh darn it, if we just do a drill a little differently, he doesn't get hurt. So I, I, I am not at all writing off the Cowboys, but what I am saying is some of this stuff does lend credence to some of the skepticism that they were a little high on their own supply. Yes. That, I can, that I can grant you. Our Cowboys defense, yes. as Brew mentioned, gave up 28 points. I mean, not perfect. What? Not Hold great. On. Do you agree, though? That playing down to – Don't you, you after think you they lose, played down say, to the Cardinals? But should he say that? Thank you, bro. We think that, yes. Let us say that. Okay, go Also, ahead. the I Cardinals mean, aren't bad. Cardinals had a fourth-quarter lead in every one of these games. They just gave it up the last two times. Okay, I think, I think we're going to, at the end of the season, say the Cardinals are a bad team. The Cardinals aren't miserable. How about that? They're okay, sure. They're yeah. They, 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 they're I mean, not they're a great squad. More fun to watch than the Patriots. I agree. I no. mean, there are some other teams out there that are. <laughs> well, they just that, beat that your Super not, Bowl not, team, so the, they must be okay. No, they, well, a hundred percent. They they yesterday, I think they played well because in a, th- this is we've seen this story before. As far as a team does overlook an opponent, that opponent gets off to a good start, and the ball starts rolling downhill to mm-hmm. a degree. What I think is more noteworthy when it comes to Micah Parsons in talking about yesterday. Yesterday's game is less about the post-game comments and more about how the Cardinals sneaky neutralized. neutralized him. Now he still had a good statistical game by almost any other defensive player's standard. He had a sack. He had a couple tackles for a loss. He had hits on the quarterback. Yep. But the reason Arizona was so effective running the ball was they used his aggression against him in a way we have seen done in the past. If you remember last year, I forget, gosh darn it, I forget which opponent it was, right. but did the exact same thing yeah. going right out. It might have been Philadelphia in one of the games uh, early on. And yeah. so there is a level of that to me, if I'm the Cowboys, is something I want to look more at, which is, our team's going to now start to run right at yes. our superstar pass rusher. And in order for him to counteract that, how much does that take away from his superstar pass rushing if he has to guard up against it? Well, I think also, look, they're going. teams are going to do that. They kind of got him off guard with the misdirection early, and then they started running right at him, right? And we saw it the last two years his play has declined a little as the season went on, right? I think that's because he can get worn down. I mean, he's, this is a smaller guy compared to all these offensive linemen that he's going against. And if they keep running at him and he's even pass rushing and going against them, that could wear him down. That's a concern of mine. I want to throw this out because you guys know I have a problem with the Cowboys culture. Yeah. All right, starting with Jerry Jones, and he says these silly off-the-wall things, and it leads to some of the players saying stuff. All right, now, Micah – I. Micah, you guys know, I think he's tremendous. I thought he was the MVP after the first two games. He's my pick for defensive player of the year in the preseason. But I think, like, what he said, he shouldn't say that about we played down to our opponent, okay? And I also wonder, and I, I don't want to take money out of his pockets. I don't want to tell him what to do. He's, I support his right to do a podcast. But you look at the guys doing podcasts. Travis and Jason Kelsey, they got rings. Tyreek Hill's been all, all over some. He's got a ring. Uh, even uh, Paul George and Pat Beverly, longtime veterans. Draymond Green, rings. Are there, is there a young player that is, has not you know, accomplished team-wise something like this that has a pocket? Because it gives you tons of opportunity to say the wrong thing. He, it's a great – listen, he does a great job. But I just wonder if he's going to put his foot in his mouth too many times. Well, and, and by the way, because he's who he is and because they're the Cowboys, 
it will be dissected in a way almost no other player podcast other than Draymond's is. Travis right. and Jason's is dissected pretty well, but it's a different thing. That's almost like a family business type of thing. You know what I mean? And that, again, veterans, and, you're older. Yeah, and they're been not. Around the block it, they're, it is. They're not trying to really talk that much about NFL football. They're talking about life with a little football mixed in. It's a different spot than Micah's. I think it's an interesting point. Let's take a look at the Cowboys in the red zone. Lowest red zone zone touchdown percentage this season. Frisky Texans, Titans, Bake Show, then the Cowboys, Jets, and Saints. Nick, do you think this – oh, no, before we get to you, Mike McCarthy. Are you think this is a major issue? Well, I mean, it's why they lost the game. And it was worse than even those numbers suggest. So, like I said, I can – give the defense a bit of a pass. There were a few giant you – know, when the Cowboys got it down to less than a one-score game, they allowed the 67-yard play up the sideline. The game starts with Josh Dobbs running for 60 right. yards. Those are kind of busted coverages, bro, you know, uh, maybe singular issues. And the Diggs injury was wildly unsettling to them in the short term, I think. This was as bad of a red zone performance as we've seen in the NFL in two years. Five trips, 16 points. That, that, that is the fewest points scored with that many trips in the red zone the last two seasons. And it's not like they were fringe red zone trips. In the second half, they got the ball to the eight, the four, the eight, and the five and came away with six points. Now, the glass half full version of it is Ah, that just means a couple plays go differently and everything's fine because the Cowboys were moving the ball. If you just look at total yardage, you'd have thought the Cowboys won this game. They were moving the ball at will. The reason it is concerning is I would say threefold. The first one is last year, Brew, they were the number one red zone team in football and their primary target was Dalton Schultz and their primary ball carrier was Zeke Elliott. Both gone. So that's the first reason. Second reason is any concerns you have about the Cowboys – probably have to do with either the coach or the quarterback. And that's where – why are the Chiefs the best red zone team in the league or essentially best every year? Coach is brilliant. Quarterback's awesome. That's basically all you have to have for it. So that's – those are the concerns. And Dak, the fact that his first pick of the season came in that exact spot felt ominous. And the fact that on the previous red zone trip, on a fourth down, he almost dirted the ball when it's fourth down, just let your guy have a chance to make a play, seemingly to avoid making the mistake throwing the pick, those things were, to me at least, not nothing. They, They were concerning, and it's why they lost the game. It's concerning. They've been doing this all year. Now, it, it didn't matter against the, uh, the Jets or the Giants. Well, the Giants, in the first they were game. good in the red zone, I thought. The well, Jets, they, they were terrible. They're 6 for 15 this season as far as touchdowns yep. in the red zone. Yep. Yesterday, Dak was 2 for 9 passing, obviously with one interception, one touchdown, in the red zone. Oh. And what I saw Seven in that, that la- late in the, in the game, like, Nick, what are the questions? We, you're right. We had questions about Dak making a mistake. Yeah. And Mike uh, McCarthy's play calling yep. and clock management. So they get into the red zone with five minutes, five and a half minutes left. They run five straight plays, run with Tony Pollard up the middle. Five straight. That takes off two minutes. Well, that's the other thing. They two, played it like they were down 12. one score. Yes, you, you still got to get the ball back and score. Yep. But why did he do that? Is it because he didn't trust Dak? I mean, why are you running fi- – either he had a brain freeze and forgot about the clock, which is a problem if that's the case, sure. and if he was concerned that I don't want my quarterback to make a bad play and throw an interception, that's a concern as well. So, yeah, it, it is an issue that not just for yesterday, but I think for moving forward, something we should watch. All right, head out to Kansas City where we finally got proof that the rumors floating around about a spark – Turned out to be true, and the Chiefs still have an explosive offense. Mahomes went for three touchdowns, and the Chiefs rolled the listless <laughs> Bears. Nick, last week we tried to spoon feed you a take. We yeah, had it came like up that. with it in the meeting. We said, "Hey, Nick, can you guarantee yeah. that the you Chiefs will have I'm an explosive?" Do you remember yeah, what I'm he not said? A puppet. I'm it's not a karaoke like, machine. Like, I don't, Can't scared. just press a button to too get a take. I won't guarantee it. No. I was shocked. You know, I was like, "Come on, really? We're trying to add some juice to the segment." Tell America something real quick. Wilds 
tries to be a nice guy and before the show was like hey do you mind if i say we tried to spoon feed you a take and i'm like no man that won't bother me at all and then on the show does the only thing that he knows bothers me which hey. is that stupid voice not an impression Th of you what is it <laughs> just a voice <laughs> exactly uh listen uh, so as I told you, the Chiefs are practicing. Okay, that's a good And that was a good practice. Yeah, I think That was so. a good practice. They completed all ten, 10 different receivers, and oh, riddle me that. Oh, wait, do we have an over-the-middle threat now to replace Juju Smith-Schuster? Looks like Rache Rice might fill that very role. And then you saw the Richie James without an injury. So Washington comes in, elevate him. Oh, now we have a punt returner. You saw Jarek McKinnon doing what he did last year, catching good. touchdowns. And I know it's all going to be muddled, not muddled, but lost in the fog of the fact that Miami scored 70 points. But I would bet a lot of money that the single most dominant half of football played in the NFL all season, from this like week one to the end of the year, will end up being the first half the Chiefs played against the Bears. I don't think anybody else, 34 nothing. Let's monitor it. Let's see if there's another team all year that wins a half by more than 34 points. It happened once last season, a 35 nothing Bengals Panthers half of football. So the the Chiefs and by the way it should have been 38 nothing they took a touchdown off the board. So yeah, I mean the, and by the way, the other thing if you were watching this game national game on Fox, you know the graphic they kept putting up there, the youngest defense in the NFL is the Kansas City Chiefs. And that defense is allowing 11 points per game. So yeah, the okay, Chiefs were never going with, with the bear, you know. The, they allowed, played the Lions. Put, put, Lions pretty good, right? They allowed two touchdowns. Not good enough. Okay, yeah. So the, they've allowed three touchdowns yeah, all year. And, and the giant, yeah, the giant second half against uh, Arizona was pretty good, right? Yeah. So I, I, I think you have to. It was impressive, obviously, but we have to take into account the opponent. All right, I mean, it was the Bears. Jordan Love and the Packers put 38 on the Bears. Jordan Love's pretty good. You know, so That's they, when they had a defensive Baker too. and crew put, what, they put 27? Well, Baker, every every one of yeah. the three opponents of the Bears has had a season high in points. It's 34 so let's nothing just take at that the half before into they consideration. Bench the starters pretty good? Was it, they will, were great. Will there be a, a more dominant half of football played in the NFL all year? Yes, yes there's count. already been. The, the, not by 30, not 34 I, it, Well, if you're just looking at points, but – I, I'm also – I got another concern. I mean – You got another concern? Mahomes and Andy Reid are asked about Travis Kelsey's new girlfriend. Yeah. Could that be a potential distraction? No. no. You sure? No. Yeah, and I'm not sure that's his new girlfriend. Oh, just well, I'm just somebody sure. just friends? Yeah, I'm just, not I'm okay. not sure exactly oh, okay. what, what the story is. I, I'm ready to announce I'm back on the Chiefs panel. You were right. never invited on it. You jumped off. You, I'm you, beloved, you, you crashed. You are, Here's what he Wilds did. Yeah. Can I tell you what Wilds did? Wilds crashed a wedding. And then, and and then, or, and then a couple <laughs> songs in yelled to the crowd. This party sucks! No. And walked out. And then they started playing Can't Stop Believing, and Wilds came running back in. This is my song. You were never invited. You announced you were out. We don't want you back. Tell that to the mayor of Kansas City, who I met. Okay. Uh, Chiefs Jets, Chiefs Vikings, Broncos Chiefs, Chargers Chiefs, Chiefs Broncos, Dolphins Chiefs. Yeah. That sounds I, I, like a Super Bowl team. That sounds like a playoff team. Check in on November 5th. I might be leaving the party again for the Dolphins. But right now, I'm with you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.